Hello my dear friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day and in today's video we'll have some fun with 3D models in PowerPoint. So basically we'll take this 3D model of a laptop and I'll show you how you can replace this black screen with your own custom image. Ok, so we will bring this 3D model and this image together and we will create one single 3D model that you can animate. That's super duper awesome, let's go! Alright my friends, so first of all let's remember how we can insert a custom screen into a photo of a laptop, ok, so this is just a simple photo of a laptop and let's just go to insert shapes and let's just draw a rectangle that covers the whole screen of this laptop. And now let's just find a photo that we can use, if you have Office 365 you can use stock images provided by PowerPoint, let's search for mountains and let's use this photo, let's click insert. And now we can hold down the control and shift key and resize this photo a little bit just like that. Now let's send it one step backwards, that's good. Now hold down the shift key, select the photo, select the rectangle, go to shape format, go to merge shapes and choose intersect. And skadoosh ladies and gentlemen, this is how easily and quickly we have created a new screen for this laptop. By the way, you can go to picture format, click on crop and you can zoom in or zoom out and reposition your photo, ok? And once you're happy, just click on crop again to finalize the changes. And I would recommend using this method if you are creating just a one-time presentation, but in case you are creating a template for multiple use, I would recommend just cutting this blue rectangle and jumping into the slide master view. So let's go to slide master view. And here on the left side, we can see the slide layout that we're currently using. So let's just duplicate it. And here on the duplicate, let's just paste our beautiful rectangle. That's awesome. Now let's go to insert placeholder, let's choose picture and let's make sure that we cover this whole rectangle. Let's send this picture placeholder to back, let's select it, select the rectangle while holding down the shift key and once again let's go to merge shapes and choose intersect. And this way we have created an image placeholder. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And now we can rename this layout, let's give it a new name, for example laptop. Let's click rename, but here PowerPoint says that I have already created laptop, so let's just call it laptop 2, ok it works and now let's get back to normal view. And now let's make sure that slide 18 is selected, let's go to layout and let's choose our newly created laptop 2 slide layout. That's awesome, now as you can see we have this little image button, we can click on it and now we can insert any custom image that we wish, for example this new laptop screen. So these are the two methods that you can use to insert custom screens for your devices, for example laptops, computers or tablets or anything else that you wish. And by the way, if your device mockup is tilted and has some perspective, for example like this, in that case I would recommend watching this PowerPoint tutorial by Andrew, he has done a wonderful job, link is in the video description and in this tutorial you can learn how you can replace screens on tilted devices, for example this phone or this laptop. Alright, well done and let's make sure that we leave a like for this awesome video and now let's get back to our tutorial. Alright my friends, so the big question is how we can take a 3D model and how we can merge it with a simple photo, ok? And if we would just simply try taking this photo and placing it on top of the laptop and then just grouping both of these guys into one group, this would not work because first of all the perspective of the screen is not correct and secondly all of the 3D animations are missing so basically PowerPoint thinks that this group is just a photo. So let me undo a couple of steps and as you can see a 3D model should have all of these 3D model animations in the animation pane. And at the same time all 3D models have this white handle in the middle that we can use to rotate this 3D model to any direction or view that we want. And if we would jump to 3D model options in PowerPoint, as you can see there are no options to edit the 3D model itself. So what should we do? And luckily for us there is a free online tool that we can use to achieve everything that we need. And by the way this tool is not sponsoring today's video. And it's called Vectory, so let's go to Vectory.com and let me show you how we can replace the screen of a 3D laptop. Ok, so once we log in, Vectory will give us some starting projects, but let's just click somewhere on the canvas to deselect 
And now let's go to workspaces. And here as you can see we have a plenty of 3D models to choose from. So let's click on this uh, laptop model and it will be inserted into the canvas. Let's wait a little bit because it's working on the internet. All right. And here is our beautiful 3D model of a laptop. And you can use your left mouse button to move your model around the same way we can do it in PowerPoint. And you can use the right uh, button to pan your model. Okay. So now let's go to project. So this is basically like a selection pane. Let's make sure we select the screen. And now here on the right side, we have this emission option. And here we have this little window. Let's click on it. And here we can upload basically a new picture for the screen. And now the important thing is that our new picture has to have these precise dimensions. So 2560 pixels for the width and 1600 pixels for the height. And we can open up a fresh blank new presentation to create this picture that we need. So first of all, let's make sure that we're using a blank slide layout. Now let's go to design slide size. And here we can insert a new value for the width, which has to be 2560 pixels. So let's try inserting 2500 pixels directly into this field. Let's just hit tab. And I'm not sure if the conversion is correct. So let's uh, use this online converter. Once again, let's insert 2560 pixels and we get 67 centimeters, 73. So let's insert this number into the width field. Let me just change the dot to comma because this is how my system works. And for the height, let's do it as well. Let's insert 1600 pixels and let's copy this value in centimeters, which is 42.33 centimeters. All right. And now we can just click OK, click on maximize and we have the perfect size slide. OK, let's uh, turn the background to black. And now we can insert any content that we wish into this slide. So let me just get back to my previous presentation and let's just reuse one of these slides. For example, slide number one. And now let me just play this slide on the full screen so that we can make a screenshot. And on Windows, you can hold down the shift Windows key and hit letter S. And this way you can make a screenshot. So let's just click on this little button. All right. And now we can get back to the normal view. And now let's just hit Ctrl V to paste the screenshot. Super duper awesome. And now let's resize this screenshot a little bit, just like that. And let's crop it to aspect ratio 16 by 9 so that we can remove those black bars at the top and bottom. That's awesome. And as you can see, the shortcut is visible in the screenshot, but that's okay. It will do for the tutorial. Now let's cut the screenshot. Let's get back to this presentation and let's paste the screenshot right here. As you can see, we have to resize it. So first of all, let's move it into the center of the slide. Hold down the control shift key so that the screenshot touches the edges of the slide. All right. And now we can save this slide as an image. So let's go to save as. Let's choose our safe location. For example, desktop. Let's give a name to this image. And let's choose picture format, for example, PNG. And let's click on save. And PowerPoint will probably ask you how many slides you want to export. So let's choose just this one. All right, so the photo has been exported and now we can check out the details. Let's see if we have the correct dimensions. And as you can see, yes, everything is correct. We have 2560 by 1600. So let's get back to Vectory. Let's make sure the screen is selected. And now let's go to this emission option. Let's click on this little window. And now we can upload our newly created image. So here it is. Let's select it and let's click on open. And skadoosh, ladies and gentlemen, we have just inserted a custom screen for this beautiful 3D laptop. And now let me show you how we can export this 3D model so that we can use it in PowerPoint. Let's go to export. And for the file format, let's use JLB. And let's just click on download. That's how easy it is. OK. And you can rename your project and the name of your project will be the name of your 3D model. So let's get back to PowerPoint. Let's go to insert. Let's choose 3D model from this device and let's go to downloads. And here's our newly created model. Let's click insert and skadoosh, ladies and gentlemen, you have inserted your first 3D laptop model with a custom screen. Congratulations. So now, as you can see, we can use this handle in the middle to rotate this model. We can insert 3D model animations if we wish. But as you can see, our laptop is looking really bright. It looks almost white. And if we would compare it to Vectory, this laptop looks gray. So why do we have this difference in appearance? And the reason for that is that PowerPoint adds additional lighting to all of the 3D models that you insert into PowerPoint. It basically adds four additional lights. But if we would jump to 3D model options in PowerPoint, as you can see, there is no way to adjust the lighting settings. 
but I'll show you how we can do that. So first of all, let's just close this presentation. Okay. So let's find our presentation file. Here it is. Let's just right click on it. Okay. Let's just right click and let's choose 7-zip. This is a free tool that you can use to open archive files or to create archive files. If you don't have this software in your computer, link is in the video description. And yes, every PowerPoint presentation is basically an archive file. So let's click on open archive. Next, let's go to this PPT folder. Now let's jump into the slides folder and here we can see all of the slides that exist in our presentation. Let's choose slide 20. This is where our bright model is. Let's right click and let's choose edit. And here we can basically see all of the code that is related to slide 20. And now let's hit Ctrl F and let's search for code related to light. So let's just type in light and let's choose find next. All right, so here's the first line of code related to lighting. Okay, so let me just hit enter once so that we can better see the code. And now let's hit Ctrl F one more time and let's find the last line of code related to light. So here it is. Let me hit enter one more time so that we can see this code related to light better. All right. And now let me hit enter a few more times so that we can separate the different lights. So there should be four lights that are being added automatically. Okay, so the first one is ambient. And after that, we have three point lights. So one way to reduce the brightness of your 3D model would be deleting all of the three point lights just like that. So this is definitely an option, but I think that without the point lights, the 3D model would look a little bit flat. So the next thing that you could do is adjust these RGB values for each of the lights. And on Google, I have found these lighting settings created by someone else. Link is in the video description. And let me just use these lighting settings. Let me just copy them. Let's get back to our notepad. Let's delete the old uh, lines of code and let's insert the new ones. Okay, super duper awesome. Now let's make sure that we save this notepad file. Okay, and here as well, let's make sure we click OK to update the archive file. All right. And now let's open up the presentation once again and let's scroll down to slide 20 and let's see if we see any changes. Okay, so here's our laptop model and I think it's a little bit less bright. Let's rotate it a little bit and yes, I think it's definitely less bright. We can actually bring this laptop to the side and let's insert the original model once again and let's check if we can see any difference, okay? So let's insert the original model here on the right side and let's rotate it a little bit so that we can see the bottom just like that. And as you can see, this model on the left side is definitely not as bright as this one on the right. So keep in mind that once you will be inserting models into PowerPoint, PowerPoint will add some additional lighting and you might want to adjust that. All right, my friends, and next we can do anything that we wish for this 3D model. So let's go to animations and let's add this turntable animation which basically spins your 3D model around. Let's go to animation pane. We can as well jump into the effect options and change the amount of the spin. Let's uh, make it continuous. You can as well make it clockwise or up and down. And in the duration field, let's just insert five seconds just for fun. And as well in the effect options, let's add smooth start and smooth end of two seconds. Hit OK. Looking beautiful. All right, so let's check it out on the full screen. Congratulations ladies and gentlemen, now you know how you can insert a custom screen for your 3D laptop model. And on this slide I have played a little bit more and added a few more 3D models and all of these models are available on Vectory.com. Alright my friends, that's all for this tutorial, thanks for watching. And as always, tutorial slides will be available to my friends on Patreon.com. Stay happy, stay healthy and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.